Hello and welcome to this episode of How to Be a Great Player. Well, in today's episode, I've got Michael. G'day, guys. I've got Jono. Hello. Thank you. I've got Simon. Hey, guy. And I've got Freddy. Hello. <laughs> who are my usual players at my game Bacon Battalion and Adventures of the Windswift, which you can find on our sister channel. Now today what we thought we should do is look at how these four great role players came up with the characters that they play in this role playing game so that you can go and have a look, see what they do, see the antics that they get up to and learn from their mistakes as well as to get inspiration from them and the various antics that they get up to. So Michael, let's start with you. Michael, what aspects do you look for when you're creating a character? Um, that's actually a really interesting question. For me, um, I, I believe I've found literally no one in the world who has followed my particular process for building a character because the first thing I say is what do I hate? What do I absolutely and utterly despise? And then I set myself the challenge of now what can I do to make myself like this? It actually started before story. It started with class. Because I've always wanted to have a rogue character, and and I thought it'd be interesting, like to to build something around that. In fact, that's kind of how I've. Um, this is going to be one of those <laughs> questions you'll ask later, but it's kind of how I I build my stuff. I look at something I want to play as first, so and then I'll build the story around that. Uh, well, character creation for me is can be a bit of a tricky process, and it usually starts in quite an abstract way. Uh, and becomes more solid as I get into actually playing the character. Uh, so I usually find some sort of aspect of the world that I can hook onto. Uh, in this case, it was flying ships. Uh, I love flying ships anyway, so that was easy. Um, by extension, then comes the concept of flying itself. Uh, flying has ideas around freedom and escape from the troubles of, of the world. Um, this then allowed me to sort of uh, introduce an idea of a conflict between the desire to flee the world and the demands of conscience and responsibility and duty, uh, which in turn lead, led me to solidify his background. Uh, flying was an escape from a tragedy in his past, and the Druidic orders are, are a very clear path to a very special kind of freedom in becoming a flying animal. Since this is a campaign, I want to play something that I generally like to play um, rather than something that I want to explore. Um, so I generally tend to play lawful characters um, because it helps to, guide, helps to guide me role playing if they kind of follow some sort of law or code um, because it narrows down the choices so you have more time to think about each individual choice rather than just like, oh, what can I do? I can do everything. So that helps me in that regard. So what aspects do you look for in a character when, you, when you're coming up with a character? What are the aspects that you look for? Mm. So I know some people like to sort of play wildly different people from who they are, but for myself, I tend more comfortably to, to latch on to bits of my actual personality and sort of channel those into my characters. So they often tend to be philosophical types who strive to be maintaining a reason in the face of a chaotic world. Um, I like to play characters who are essentially the good guy. With Graham. I, I picked a darker side of the story. One, because I've never played an evil character before. And 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 two, this is a, it's very interesting, like having a, a lawful evil character. It's almost becoming more like maybe a chaotic neutral character, but overall, he still has like malicious and evil intent up in here, but he's still thinking of the long game to get to his eventual goal. I mean, at one point, if there's an opportunity that, um, that will get him to his goal, and that means leaving the party. It, he'll just he'll go. Mm. It's not going to take a moment's thought. I look for a character that works in a group. I think that is super important. Um, if if it doesn't work in a group, why are you in a group, right? Like then, just if you're a strider who just sits in the back of the corner smoking his pipe with the hood deep in his face, and you just want to be left alone, then people will leave you alone, right? So you need to have like some 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 openness to to get some group dynamics going. I think that is an aspect that is probably the most important thing uh, that a character can have. So how do you decide what your character wants and what your character does? How do you decide that? Um, 
well, for me, I've got three steps. The three basic steps being, what does my GM want? What does my fellow players want? And what do I want? Uh, and then I base my motives for my character and weaknesses as well based on that information. So if my GM, for example, wants me to be interested in killing giants, um, that is something I factor in. I think, okay, now my character may not necessarily be the optimum character. I may not be Gobrok, the, uh, the giant slayer, and I'm going to head out and slay all the giants because that's kind of, it's not really leave much room for role play. But, you know, it could be something along the lines of, yeah, I had a farm. I had to leave my farm because giants had um, basically scared away all the game in the land. Uh, and my and the hunting family that I had couldn't survive and we had to migrate. So I've got a personal gripe against them, but it's not necessarily what shapes my true destiny, as it were. Mm -hmm. uh, same thing goes with players as well, because obviously it's not just about you as an individual on the table, but who else is with you. And if there's another player um, who may, for example, have motivations of, oh, I'm going to this big temple up on a hill on a pilgrimage for my god, uh, I might get inspired by that and say, hey, you know what? How, how would you like a, a, you know, a friend that you met on the road? So you know, then my story evolves and it becomes, a, oh, well, yes, I'm a hunter. I was chased away from my homeland by giants who had scared off the game. I bumped into a priest and the priest was you know, a really friendly guy, but you know, zero sense of survival. <laughs> so I, uh, I, I you know, got my stuff and traveled with him to make sure he got to where he needed to get to. Um, and then the third one is obviously myself because um, when the reason I put myself so low is because um, once I have those first two pieces, the third thing really can be anything because you already fit into the group and you already fit into the setting. And by the time, you know, I, at that point I can say, yeah, I wish to find a deck of many things, but which has literally nothing to do with giants, nothing to do with the other players and stuff like that. But because I've got my player connection, because I've got my role play connection to the story, literally it gives me that much more freedom for mm. my own personal motivations. Not every decision you can make and the character possibly could make fits into the game. So my maxim, my general goal in what my characters do is, is it fun for other players? Because if it is not fun for other players, then you shouldn't do it, even if this is something my character would do. So this can mean, can mean a lot of different things, but most importantly for me is that this is twofold. First one is, it does it shut down another player? Coming back to the lawful stupid uh, decisions from a paladin that he can take. Does it shut down what another player wants to do? The second one is, does it jeopardize the integrity of a group? Does this split our group? Doesn't that, sh isn't that, uh, I don't mean by that that um, there shouldn't be like maybe infighting in the group or something like this, but if you put different characters or the dungeon master as well in a situation where these people wouldn't work together anymore mm -hmm. because they want to kill each other now, for instance, right? Mm -hmm. Um, then, well, this is a group game. Now you have a problem, right? If this is like a super su small side adventure, maybe there's something you can work out. But if this is like a general problem, then it doesn't work as well. So these are the two things. Does it shut another player down? And does it jeopardize the integrity of a group? Mm -hmm. And if these red flags, or maybe other things, depending on the players I play with, and if these red flags are kind of satisfied, um, then kind of, okay, what fits the character the most, then that's what I go with. Or if it doesn't fit these uh, flags, then maybe I do something that wouldn't necessarily fit with the characters because then the game can go on and that is obviously more important. So I, I, with all my characters, I start with, with the baselines, which is kind of like the old hierarchy of needs. So everyone needs food, shelter, companionship, and purpose in life. I mean, these are the basics. And, and so my character is going to interact with the world Basically, you know, initially I on that level, um, and over that I lay the concepts I've got of the personality, who my character is, what they believe in, what their philosophy is. Um, you know, most people don't want to hurt anyone as they go about their day. Uh, you know, they, uh, so that allows me to to play the personality I've invented for Con with all his dark past and so on. Um, interacting with the world, which then ultimately is uh, all of that meets the world that the GM has presented in the situations that the character then finds himself in. It's just stepping into the role, I guess, of Grim, and then for people like Curious out there who, who are looking for ways to kind of uh, decide what's good for their character. I guess try to look, not like ask yourself, like not ask yourself what you would do. Ask. What do you think your character would do? And it's like, it's based off of like what their goals are. 
maybe what they're afraid of or what what they like to do you know like if uh if you're like some paladin but like you're really lazy and like you just don't want to do anything maybe you won't immediately jump into combat you're just like well i guess i guess let's go <laughs> it, mm-hmm. it's just it's just a character thing that you you, you kind of feel And thanks to you guys for watching. If you want to see more, hit that like button. If you like what you saw, hit the subscribe button for even more videos coming up. And uh, from me and my players, if you want to see all of their antics, head on over to uh, Bacon Battalion, The Adventures of the Windswift. The link is below. Um, And uh, you can watch their adventures. They've finished Season 1, which was quite a lengthy 12-episode um romp through a frozen ziggurat and all sorts of weird wonderful things happen there and uh, yes it certainly seems to have have hit a chord with our viewers on that channel they are responding to it and uh, until next time i wish you and yours the happiest of playing